Hello everyone. So today I'll talk about a recent work that I've made uh, with my student, Luca Pinal, and a former postdoc at IAP, Yushiro Tada. So one of the main reasons to work on stochastic inflation is that it addresses conceptual issues of standard perturbation theory, namely the fact that um, one artificially split the fields between a classical background and quantum fluctuations. This is not very satisfactory. And moreover, as you know, this picture breaks down for uh, very light scalar fields whose dynamics is dominated by quantum diffusion. This is obviously related to the late time infrared structures of correlators in the city space and inflation, which is a well-known difficult problem. But it's also important to realize that um, stochastic inflation provides a practical tool to compute observable quantities and in particular, the full PDF of the curvature perturbation, which has attracted attention recently in, in different contexts. So in our work, uh, we show how to formulate and derive stochastic inflation in a manner that is covariant under field definitions, which has never been done before. So um, the context is the one of inflation in high energy physics with multiple scalar fields interacting through their potential and their kinetic terms with a generic uh, field space metric, GIJ. So classically, you can make any field redefinitions. For instance, you can um, use Cartesian or polar coordinates to describe a flat field space without changing the physics. But in general, you know, it's not obvious to maintain such classical symmetries at the quantum level. And as stochastic inflation is a way to deal with quantum effects, you can indeed expect the problem to be non-trivial. Um, in addition, we derive the Langevin equations of stochastic inflation in a rigorous manner using tools of non-equilibrium quantum field theory. And under a Markovian approximation, we also derive a generic covariant Fokker-Planck equation in phase space, which can be used in uh, many practical applications. So I'll begin with an introduction to stochastic inflation then I will discuss the solution of the stochastic anomalies, and then I will turn to the pass integral uh, derivation. So stochastic inflation is a classical stochastic effective theory for the coarse grain super Hubble fields. So the background of standard perturbation theory is replaced by uh, such infrared fields. But uh, as inflation proceeds, there's a continuous flow of initially sub Hubble UV modes that join the infrared sector. And this manifests itself uh, in the dynamics of the infrared field as a uh, stochastic noise. So um, here, phi is the long wavelength part of the scalar field, which is locally homogeneous in the many uh, Hubble sized regions that make up our observable universe during inflation. But this field can have, in general, very different values in these different patches. Um, these regions evolve like separate universes, but they all emerge from the same initial condition when the observable universe was comprised within a Hubble radius. And so this Langevin equation governs the stochastic dynamics of a representative Hubble sized region with a drift term coming from the classical dynamics and a noise term. So here xi is a Gaussian white noise corresponding to um, initially quantum fluctuations joining the infrared sector with the famous amplitude h over 2 pi. And eventually, in simple situations, from such a Langevin equation, one can derive a Fokker-Planck equation, which describes um, the evolution of the probability density function that the field have a given value phi at time n, given some initial condition. So, um, what is remarkable about stochastic inflation is that it agrees with much more elaborate uh, QFT computations. But um, even more interesting, um, it enables ones to resum late time infrared divergencies of perturbative quantum field theory. For instance, in the typical lambda 5 4 theory in the CITER, um, despite the small coupling constant lambda, if you wait long enough, you will have uh, secular divergences but it's straightforward in the stochastic formalism to derive uh, non perturbative results, like the equilibrium distribution of um, test scalar fields in, in the situ space. 
But um, despite this, there are a number of outstanding questions in this field. Uh, what are the limitations of stochastic inflation? How to rigorously derive it, as well as corrections to it? So this has been the subject of uh, many works, uh, including recent ones by participants, and so we expect uh, interesting discussions. Uh, something worth stressing in a workshop about cosmological correlators is that the stochastic formalism is not only useful to study test scalar fields in the sitter, it's also a useful tool for inflation to compute quantities of direct uh, observational relevance. So the Fokker-Planck equation describes the time evolution of inhomogeneities of the scalar field in the various Hubble patches with a clock uh, that is the same in all patches. But one can actually invert um, the Fokker-Planck equation and ask another question, which is starting from a given field value in the patch that give rise to our universe, what is the local number of e-folds of inflation in the different Hubble regions? Um, then, similarly to the usual delta informalism, one can deduce the large-scale curvature perturbation as the fluctuation in the local number of e-folds, which is a stochastic quantity here and then derive uh, non-perturbative results like the full PDF of zeta. So um, stochastic inflation has been uh, extensively studied, but not in the general context of a paper. Uh, that is, we consider multi-field inflation with a curved field space, taking into account the back reaction on the space-time geometry and in the full phase space, so without assuming slow roll or anything about the dynamics. So there are several reasons to do that. Um, as you will see, considering a general situation like that enables one to attack problems um, that are also there in simpler single field setups, but with a new perspective. Another motivation is uh, the genuine interest for uh, these kind of models, which has been ex extensively studied in the past years for um, different reasons that would deserve a, a talk on its own. But um, in this context, let me just make some publicity for uh, some work in my group with some uh, very good postdocs and students. Um, of particular interest to this workshop uh, may be uh, our generalization of maldes ns computation to multi-field inflation with a curved field space. Um, here we have uh, results that um, unifies and generalize previous partial results. And I think it's a very useful result in the cosmological collider program. For those interested, uh, we've also worked on mechanisms to generate uh, primordial black holes from strong turns on the heat stability during inflation using actually methods of stochastic inflation as well as um, um, as well as on non-Gaussian signatures of uh, strongly non geodesic motion. So um, let me now briefly describe the heuristic approach to the problem. Um, I only sketch it as I will show next to more rigorous uh, pass integral derivation that solve the conceptual issues of this uh, historical approach. So um, basic idea that you split the fields and momenta into infrared and UV parts, uh, keeping in the infrared parts only the commoving momenta less than the time dependent coarse graining scale K sigma equals sigma AH, where sigma is a small parameter. So you plug this in the classical equation of motion for the full fields, you linearize in the UV fields, but you keep all nonlinearities in the infrared sector at leading order in a gradient expansion. You further assume that the UV fields behave as in standard perturbation theory. And crucially, you take into account the time dependence of the coarse graining scale. So if you do so, you can easily derive uh, reasonably looking Langevin equations, which look like the well-known ones of the background. So here, dn is uh, covering derivative uh, in field space. So standard equations plus stochastic noises, the xi here, whose uh, correlations are given by um, the power spectra of the UV fields for the mode that uh, crosses the coarse graining scale at that time. So these equations look reasonable, but uh, even independently of their derivation, they are not satisfactory as far as covariance is concerned. So I'll describe that in the second part of the talk. But before that, let me stress uh, one thing, that the infrared dynamics in full generality is not Markovian. That is, uh, that the amplitude of the noises um, 
as, as, as are not functions of the fields and momenta at time n. They are simply given by the solution of the UV dynamics in the effective background of the infrared fields. But the infrared fields are themselves subject to these noises. So the dynamics is quite um, complex, and it's only by making a Markovian approximation that one can write a Fokker-Planck equation. So in our paper and in the rest of the talk, I sometimes write Fokker-Planck equation, but that's really only for pedagogy, as um, covariance can be studied already at the level of the more general Langevin equations uh, that we derive without making uh, the Markovian approximation. So um, to discuss the covariance of the Langevin equations, I have to explain some aspects of stochastic calculus. So a stochastic differential equation should really be seen as the continuous limit of a discrete Brownian process, where at each time step, uh, the white noise generates an increment of um, a typical size, the square root of the time interval. So because of this, in the continuous limit, a stochastic process is not uh, differentiable, but contrary to ordinary differential equation, the continuous limit keeps a memory of the details of the discretization that is used, especially in the situation of uh, so-called multiplicative noise, when the amplitude of the stochastic kick, so G here, um, depends on the stochastic variable X. So um, there are two main choices of discretizations, Ito, which is a pre-point discretization, and Strasonovich, which is a midpoint discretization indicated by uh, the circle here. Now, when you consider a function f of your stochastic variable, say um, x squared, you would expect that it verifies a Langevin equation that simply derives from the chain rule. But this is only verified in uh, Strasonovich, while in Ito, you get a weird uh, corrective term. But um, there's a conserv conservation of trouble here in some sense, um, which is uh, best seen in the Fokker-Planck equation for the PDF. So there are um, two terms in such an equation, a drift and a diffusion term. In Ito, the drift is uh, simply what you expect from the Langevin equation. But in Strasonovich, you get another contribution, a uh, so-called noise-induced drift, uh, in the case of G being a function of X. So um, something to keep in mind, what I have described is this, that is when you have a given form of a stochastic differential equation, if you interpret it with different schemes, that really defines different physical theories with different uh, PDF and so on. But for a given physical theory, you can always describe it using uh, different discretization schemes, but then the stochastic differential equations um, will look different, they will have different drift terms, but they really describe the same physics, and one knows how to go from one form to the other, and uh, one will use such thing in, in the rest of the talk. So, um, keeping this in mind, how to interpret the usual equation of stochastic inflation has been uh, discussed in the literature. Some papers prefer uh, Ito, arguing that uh, only this choice respects causality, but actually that's not a valid point. A uh, long time ago, uh, Starobinsky uh, argued uh, convincingly that white noises correspond to idealizations of uh, cotton noise, which is what you get when you consider a smooth splitting between the UV and the infrared fields, and hence that the midpoint uh, Strasonovich choice is better. It has also been argued that the difference between the two schemes exceed the accuracy of the stochastic formalism, and uh, what well, in this context, we bring a new perspective to the problem by paying attention to the covariance of the theory. So um, things are rather easy in single field slow roll. Uh, first for a test scalar field. Um, so there's no question here uh, because the amplitude of the noise H is not a function of phi. Uh, for a true inflaton, H does depend on phi. And so you have uh, the Ito versus Stonovich uh, issue but we've shown that the difference between the two is suppressed by V over the Planck mass to the four, so it's, it's completely negligible. Uh, however, uh, for a generic situation, like with multiple fields, there's, there's a real issue. Um, so um, systems of stochastic differential equations 
are uh, not much more not much uh, more complicated but uh, an important point is that to define them you have to decompose the stochastic kick of the variable x little a into a sum of kicks of given amplitudes corresponding to different uh, independent Gaussian white noise, the uh, psi a here. And the Fokker-Planck equation now has a drift vector and a diffusion matrix. Um, and again, the drift in Satanovich has a noise-induced component in general. So um, let me explain the problem in multifield inflation in a simple setup. Suppose you want to write Langevin equations for multiple fields in slow roll with drift corresponding to the classical dynamics and with stochastic kicks uh, xi i here having the usual correlation function um, h over 2 pi squared times times gij. Okay, uh, but these are uh, not yet well-defined stochastic differential equations. Again, you have to decompose the noises on a set of independent normalized noises. And if you want to reproduce the correlators, you see that the decomposition should involve uh, field binds of the metric. Um, but the thing is that there is an infinite number of field binds that differ by arbitrary uh, field dependent rotations. That uh, arbitrary, arbitrariness has no impact in the Ito scheme, as then there is no noise induced drift, but it matters for Strozonovich. Well, then you could say, uh, then choose Ito, but actually remember that the standard chain rule is uh, only verified in Sotonovich. And as a result, you can check that the equation I have written down respects covariance under field definitions uh, only in that case. So the problem is real, as you can see from uh, these plots, uh, which represent averages over um, 10,000 realizations of Langevin equation in a simple two field model. Different choice of field binds in Sotonovich lead indeed to different physical results. Um, you can also see the problem at the level of the Fokker Planck equation deduced from the Langevin equations. So um, the rescale PDF uh, defined that way should be a scalar in field space. And so it's easy to, to check covariance with that. And indeed, the Fokker Planck equation deduced from the equations in Stratonovich is manifestly covariant, as you can see with um, covariant derivatives entering into it but it has a spurious dependence on the arbitrary choice of field bind, which is of course not satisfactory. So um, now let me explain the solution to the problem. So basically two things. First, if you compute things in a standard manner using for instance the chain rule, you are actually implicitly using the midpoint Stratonovich discretization. Um, second, there is actually a preferred set of independent noises coming from the quantum theory. For this, uh, remember that uh, similarly to the decomposition of the noises into independent noises, when you quantize the UV fields, you also expand them into a set of independent uh, annihilation and creation operators. So the n squared uh, mode functions QIA are complex, but crucially, crucially on superhuman scales, they become real um, to a very good accuracy for light scatter fields, corresponding to fluctuations being um, in a very squeezed state. And hence, you can forget about the complex conjugate here, and you end up with uh, things being proportional to A plus uh, A dagger. And well, these, op uh, these, opera these operators commute with one another, so they behave really classically, and uh, they provide the independent normalized Gaussian white noises that one was looking for. So that uh, the full Langevin equations in phase space can now be written uh, in an, uh, an ambiguous way in terms of the psi and uh, the mode function of the UV fields and of the UV momenta. So uh, there's, no, there's no stochastic anomaly, um, but the resolution is uh, still quite formal as the mode functions are not simply functions of the stochastic variables phi and pi. So to make things uh, clearer, um, it's actually useful to convert these equations uh, from the Stratonovich team to the Ito one by introducing uh, auxiliary variables that eventually disappear from the computation. Uh, so they turn out to be field binds that are parallel transported in a stochastic sense. So skipping the details that, uh, which are a bit uh, technical, one eventually ends up 
with uh, these equations, which look like the previous ones, but with the appearance of um, new types of derivatives. So um, there's no ambiguity of any frame in these equations, as it's only the correlation of the effective uh, noises that matter in the Itoshim. And so the correlators are fixed in terms of the power spectra of the UV modes that one can uh, compute in principle. And um, these equations are actually also manifestly covariant when you study them, uh, because the conversion from strato to ito generated terms proportional to the um, correlation of the noises in a way that make these derivatives actually covariant under um, field definitions in ito calculus, despite the weird properties of ito calculus, like the chain rule being corrected by stochastic terms. So um, the derivative uh, here and there in the, in the two equations are, are different as the fields are simply coordinates and the momenta are covectors in field space. Um, so um, the derivative here is, is, is quite a complicated object. But uh, one can make a useful consistent check of all that in the Markovian approximation that is often used. So um, assuming that one can write the power spectra as functions of the stochastic field and momenta at the current time, one can derive from the previous Ito Langevin equations the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation for the phase space PDF, which is a scalar quantity. And indeed, uh, all the complicated structure of the previous equation uh, conspires to make things manifestly covariant with uh, the A terms here being rank to tensors and all the derivative uh, being covariant. In particular, you can see the natural appearance of um, a covariant derivative in phase space. So um, in addition, I, I don't discuss that here, but in the paper, we give interesting um, analytical approximations for the correlation of the noises so that uh, this equation can, can be readily used in practical applications. Okay, so um, let me now move to the third part of the talk, uh, where I discuss the rigorous uh, pass integral derivation of the Langevin equations. So uh, first, uh, as people uh, know well in this audience, in cosmology, one computes uh, expectation values in some in-state, typically the bunch davis vacuum, using uh, the schwinger kaldish formalism. That is, um, the generating functional of correlators is expressed at the pass integral with a time contour that is closed that starts at minus infinity and comes back to it. Um, second, uh, the index uh, here in the action denotes both uh, fields and momenta, uh, because from first principle, the action entering into the pass integral is a Hamiltonian action, where uh, here phi and pi are considered independent, so they, they do not follow Hamilton equations. The Hamiltonian is actually quadratic in momenta, so one could perform the pass integral over the momenta, but that's actually easier to um, 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 to keep things like that, to discuss covariance, and also because of the special role played by uh, time derivatives in the stochastic formalism. A third uh, point of, of the computation is that uh, instead of considering the closed time pass, one can um, consider the simple uh, forward pass uh, C plus by doubling the degrees of freedom and having field phi plus and phi minus corresponding to each branch of the contour then you end up with the difference S of phi plus minus S of phi minus, where uh, the two kinds of fields are considered independent, except when the, the time pass close at future infinity and where the plus and minus fields are glued. So um, I guess all this is rather familiar to you. Something that is less known to cosmologists and that we crucially use in, in our paper is the so-called uh, Keldish basis, where one considers the sum and the difference between uh, the plus and minus fields. So the sum is called the classical component, and the difference is called the quantum component of the various fields. So the reason for, for these names is that if you consider the Keldish action, so S of phi plus minus S of phi minus, it's easy to check that there's always a solution to the saddle point equation with the quantum component being zero and with the classical component uh, extremizing the usual action. So verifying the classical equation of motion. So um, all this is rather general, 
and can be applied to any problem, so non-equilibrium quantum field theory. But in our context, one also split the fields into their infrared and UV probes. So uh, for all the fields and momenta, uh, and for classical and quantum components. And the pass integral is also, is also split into an integral over the UV and the infrared fields, but one has to be careful uh, to boundary conditions at the transition time and sigma of, of k. So the time pass of UV modes actually close at that time. Um, so um, that, that translates into the Keldish basis uh, of the quantum component vanishing. And similarly, infrared fields start the life um, 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 infrared fields uh, start the life at that time, which uh, impose uh, classical components to, uh, to vanish them. So um, taking all this into account, one can obtain the effective action for the infrared fields by integrating out the UV fluctuations. Uh, but there's a last subtlety, which is that to respect covariance, the pass integral should be expressed in terms of covariant objects. And well, the difference between the full field and the infrared one is simply the difference between the coordinates of two points in field space. And so this uh, naive UV quantity does not transform covariantly in the field redefinitions. But given these two nearby points in field space, there's a unique geodesic that uh, connect them. And if you consider QI, the initial um, velocity along this, along this geodesic at the infrared point, this is a well-defined vector in the tangent space uh, at this point. For the momenta, the full momentum and the infrared one are covectors, again, uh, at uh, each a different point in field space. So to compare them, what you can do is parallel transport the full momentum along the geodesic and then make the difference between its parallel transport at the infrared point and uh, the infrared momentum. So the two UV objects defined that way, uh, completely geometrically, are the ones to be used in the pass integral. Uh, of course, you can relate them perturbatively to the naive uh, field perturbations and momentum perturbations. For the field, the expression is well known in the inflationary context in the work of Gong and Tanaka. And here is the expression at second order for the moment. So now we have all the tools and one can compute the effective action by perturbatively integrating out the covariant UV fields and momenta. For this, you expand the action up to second order in the UV variables and simply perform a, a Gaussian integral. But what is non-trivial here is that the linear part in the UV quantities does not vanish. In some perturbation theory, uh, these terms, which uh, look like the background equation of motion, would be zero, um, precisely um, because the background fields obey the classical equation of motion. But the point of stochastic inflation is precisely to look for corrections to this uh, background-like equation of motion. So it's crucial to actually take into account this uh, linear part of the action. And in particular, uh, the time derivatives, um, which provide the non-trivial interactions between the UV and the infrared fields uh, that come from the time dependence of the coarse graining scale. So S1 not vanishing is, is actually the reason why uh, you need this nonlinear definition of the UV fields to ensure covariance, despite the fact that we only consider uh, the quadratic action. Usually, S1 vanishes, and these subtleties only matter to compute, um, say, the cubic action or, or higher. But here, uh, they are already important at this level. Another uh, important point of the derivation is that I, I will show next. In the pass integral over the infrared fields, the configurations with uh, non-zero quantum components are heavily suppressed. And so we are entitled to make the computation at leading order in the quantum components. And um, here is the schematic form of the result of the computation. So in addition to the pure infrared action, the effective action has uh, a standard term corresponding to the renormalization of the action. And um, that's a crucial point. Uh, another contribution called the influence action that describes the influence of the UV fields that we have integrated out on the infrared sector of interest. And this influence action is uh, imaginary. So, thematically, it is uh, quadratic in the quantum components, uh, 
and with a kernel which is the real part of the power spectra of the UV fields in the background of the infrared uh, classical components. So this unusual fact that uh, this part of the action is imaginary imply that in the past integral over the infrared fields, the weight of configurations with uh, non-zero quantum components is exponentially suppressed. So this kind of uh, Boltzmann weight is, is typical of statistical field theory. And uh, following the work of uh, Feynman and Vernon in the 60s, there is a very nice way to, to deal with such situations. You basically do the inverse of a Gaussian integration. You write e to the i times influence action as the integral over some uh, auxiliary fields, the like psi here, of a term that is real, basically uh, a Gaussian weight for the psi uh, with a variance that the UV power spectra, times a term uh, that provides a linear coupling between the psi and the quantum components. So um, if you do that, you can rewrite the pass integral as a pass integral over the classical components, over the auxiliary fields with the weight that gives them the Gaussian statistics, and over the quantum components. But uh, now remember that the Keldy section is nothing else than uh, S of phi plus minus S of phi minus. So in terms of the fields in the Keldy basis, it is uh, odd in the quantum components with a cubic term that one can uh, self-consistently uh, neglect here and a linear term, which is proportional to the variation of the action evaluated, at, uh, uh, evaluated for classical components. So uh, there are only linear terms in the quantum components. And so the pass integral um, of them is actually trivial and it gives a delta function that tells you that the usual equation of motion uh, for the classical components get corrected by the psi terms. And so one has uh, derived the Langevin equation uh, one was looking for. So for all the reasons that I explained before, um, basically the fact that one has performed standard manipulations, paying attention to covariance and so on, this equation should be interpreted in the Stratonovich uh, scheme. But again, one can convert them to the Eto discretization and derive uh, these physically equivalent covariance Eto Langevin equations. Let me, um, let me now briefly uh, conclude. Um, so using methods of non-equilibrium quantum field theory, one has made a rigorous pass integral derivation of the Langevin equations of stochastic inflation uh, in a way that solves conceptual issues of the heuristic approach. And one has obtained manifestly covariant Eto Langevin equations in phase space for generic nonlinear sigma models of inflation, and under a Markovian approximation, the corresponding uh, focke planck equation. So um, our formalism is very generic, so it opens up uh, many possible applications. For instance, it would be interesting to um, um, determine the statistical properties of the curvature perturbation in concrete uh, and flashbury models, but also to study the, uh, the phase space focke planck operator in, in simple multi-field context.